<laughs> Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be modifying this universal aluminum radiator and making it work for the customer's needs. So to get started here, this is a 12 by 12 by 2 inch aluminum radiator. It's just a universal one. Um, I believe it was purchased off of Amazon. I'll find it and leave a link in the description here below. But it has a filler cap, it has an inlet, an outlet, and eight tabs on it. So to be configured the way the customer needs it, we're actually gonna shave the filler cap because it's gonna be lower than his inlet system, so we don't have to worry about having a filler cap on it. And then we are going to reconfigure some of the bungs. It's actually gonna be mounted sideways, I believe. And we're gonna have one bug where the filler cap is, and then we're gonna have one bung down here on the lower side by the drain plug. So probably the two most important things that you wanna consider when you're gonna start modifying an irradiator like this is number one, we wanna make sure to cover up these fins and protect them as well as possible. If these cooling fins get bent, it's gonna reduce the efficiency of the radiator and potentially even poke a hole in it. So the other thing we wanna look into is keeping the shavings out of it. Same reason, you don't wanna decrease efficiency of it and get stuff plugged up, and also you don't want shavings in your engine. So we wanna be very cautious about keeping all the shavings out of it and not hurting these fans. So let's get this thing all covered up. So now that we got all of our fins covered up and protected nicely, the next thing we wanna look at is we're gonna be cutting and welding on this thing. So we wanna address anything on this thing that is going to be plastic or meltable. So we have our drain cap here. It's a little plastic wing nut. So we wanna make sure we remove this. <clears throat> and then another plug or bung here. I'm not exactly sure what that's for, but it's got a rubber O-ring on it. So we wanna make sure to remove that. And then we've got our plastic caps and let's cut all this stuff off. Okay, so now that we got all of our inlet and outlet bunks cut off, we got these setting over the side here. Um, next thing we're gonna wanna do is grind and finish these edges off nicely because we're gonna need to plug these holes because we're gonna move one of these bungs over to where the filler neck was originally. And then the other one, we're gonna need to drill a hole in this opposing side. So one thing I notice is that unfortunately, even though this thing is aluminum, they thought the need that they needed to paint it silver. So we need to clean off this paint off of it before we start grinding on it so that we don't massage all that paint and debris into the aluminum so that we got some good clean substrate to weld back onto. So I'm gonna take some solvent or acetone here, wipe this paint off, grind these smooth, and we'll make some caps and weld them in. So one quick thing, I don't know if you noticed, um, right when I fired up the Porta Band, I had a bar of wax and I ran that on the blade a little bit. And with aluminum, aluminum can have the tendency to gall up inside your blades um, and putting a little bit of paraffin wax or whatever wax you got on hand. They make special cutting waxes, but even just a bar of wax or a candle or anything that simple, when you're cutting stuff through aluminum is gonna make it go a lot smoother and stuff. There are a couple things to look out for though. You can use it when you're grinding aluminum, but, but if you are gonna be welding on the same surface, I don't recommend it because that wax is gonna impregnate into your aluminum. And then when you have the heat from your weld, it's gonna boil back to the surface. So in this case, I'm only using it to cut. And then when I go and grind these surfaces off, I'll be grinding off the majority of that wax. So all I'm gonna use is a 40 grit flapper disc on a four and a half inch grinder. You wanna be careful to feather it out, make it even, you don't wanna gouge it out or anything and we'll get on with that. A little longer than a few minutes later. And just like that, we are all finished up. I wanted to spare you guys the agony of grinding. I took it outside to get it all ground off so that I don't have aluminum shavings all over inside my shop. We're gonna clean these areas up. I got some little plugs cut out for our ends where our old bungs were, and we're gonna get those all filled up. Okay, we got a couple little chunks cut out here to fill our holes. We're gonna see if we can mock something up here to temporarily hold them in place. Okay. 
Okay, and here we are once again. I spared you the grinding propaganda, and we can see we got all these finished off now. So this is where our old bungs used to set, and you can't hardly tell. What we're going to do is we're going to clean off the rest of the paint on the side of these so that we can run our abrasive across and make it look like a nice clean surface. And then we're going to run a weld around these corners so that it matches the top side here so it looks just kind of congruent across the board. After that, we will take, and one of our bung is gonna go over where our filler holes are, and one of them is gonna go down here on the bottom side. So we're gonna measure out that same distance and poke that hole. Okay, next we're going to measure out where we want our weld bung to land. And then we've got a couple things going on here. First off, I've got a pilot bit here. And I've got a collar locked in. So one of the things you wanna be aware of on these things is the internal fins, and you don't wanna puncture that drill bit too far through and chance breaking those and potentially giving you a leak or anything like that. So we're gonna put that collar on there so that we don't go all the way in. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have our tops all welded on, last thing we gotta do is weld our bungs back on in our newly drilled hole and the existing filler port hole. But I could just clean these up and weld them on with all this nonsense on there, but since we can, we're gonna take them over the lathe and turn all this junk off, make a nice clean flat surface so we know they're setting back on their level and we can burn them in. That looks much better. Okay, so the final thing to be aware of before you just go and weld your bungs onto the top of this guy is orientation. So in this case, the customer wants all of his hose nipples to be facing downwards or to the bottom of the radiator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna run this guy on and thankfully he provided these. So we're gonna run these all the way down until they're just starting to get hand tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to weld them on so when they're lightly hand tight that they are 90 degrees to facing downward. So when he goes to put this on there, it'll get tight at 90 degrees from what the location that he's intending it. And then he can stick a wrench on it and tighten it to that downward position. So something to consider. And there we have it guys, our fully modified universal radiator. Now, if you remember correctly, this bung and this bung were both on the bottom and our filler neck was here. We got everything flipped around and shaved down and blended in real nicely. So, looks like it's a, an original product. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit that bell icon and go build something guys.